talking with Wayne County Health Director David Madden. And David, I understand that uh, we want to talk about, and we want to touch on briefly about West Nile virus. Now, West Nile virus has not been in the news over the last year or so. All of a sudden, it's back in the news again. What's going on? Well, we've had a we've had a, a incident where we had a fatality for a resident of Wayne County, and the, as I was uh, looking over this, we had two cases last year. So, I mean, this time of year, it's not uncommon to see mosquito-borne viruses. Uh, you know that you see lacrosse virus out in the west of the state. You see what they call triple E, which is eastern equine encephalitis, and I think they've had nine reported cases that horses have tested positive for that and two cases of lacrosse so far this year. So it's not uncommon to see. Uh, West Nile is a, is a little more uncommon uh, sometimes when it pops up, uh, has it hits here in the county. And like I said, it can be severe and all of the, all of the cases can be severe. Well, let me ask you, uh, first of all, how would you describe West Nile virus? What is it? Well, it's a viral infection that mosquitoes get from birds and they transmit it to, to humans. This is not avian flu. This is not avian flu. Not avian flu, but it is West Nile virus. West Nile virus. They get it from birds and they transfer it to yeah, humans. It's through body. It's, it's a, the mosquito is the vector. Dave and I understand that there's a danger in handling birds. Is that right? Yeah, th Dead a, birds? Yeah, there's a risk there because uh, some common species of birds in, in eastern North Carolina, all over the United States, can have West Nile virus. And so what the precaution there is, is just monitor dead birds around your, your home, whatever. Don't, don't handle them with your bare hands. And what, just watch your children and don't let your children play with dead birds. We, we, you know, we don't need to, uh, we don't really do a lot of reporting now because we do know that West Nile virus is present in our state and in, in a lot of counties it, it can be present. So we don't really do the, the bird logging anymore. Uh, through the health department, uh, unless we, we have a condition that gets more more uh, severe, then we might we may do that. But at this point in time, we don't do that. We just encourage people not to handle dead birds with their hands. If they see a dead bird, does that mean that it died from West Nile virus, no. or it means it was flew into a window and we, hit by a car? We don't know. But 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 because you don't know, we just don't want to expose people to unnecessary risk. Should you call someone to? If there's a if there's a dead bird in the yard, do you call someone? Re recommend just people just dispose of just it. Just dispose of it. They can put it in, in the garbage or they can put it, bury it, whatever they feel appropriate. Just don't handle it with your bare, bare hands and watch your children handle it as well. Now, you know, that throws up all kinds of red flags. How do we fight this thing? Well, this is not really a, a, a condition for a state of alarm. This is more just a condition of state of awareness. Uh, there's proper precautionary measures that we have to take. And mainly it revolves around people looking around their homes, trying to remove standing water sources. Uh, their pot, you know, plant pots, containers that people may have out in the yard. Bird baths. Bird baths, swim, little kiddie pools, all those things need to be turned over to the, so they don't hold water because mosquitoes can breed rapidly and produce a lot of them in a short period of time. All right, let me make sure I understand now about the water around the home. Now we're talking about not only bird baths and pot, potted plants pot, yeah. and, and that sort of thing, anything that'll hold water where water's standing. Even a low-lying place on, say, your patio or your deck, that's where water's standing. Yeah, if it can stay there for, you know, for a day or two, it can, it can start breeding mosquitoes. I mean, I wouldn't run around and try to eliminate every single place of water, but, you know, ditches that have standing water and things like that mm -hmm. can all breed mosquitoes. But now it's the water, right. If water drains down into the ground, that is yeah, not a problem. That's right. It's standing water that's stagnant or doesn't get, that doesn't move. Like people that have fish ponds, if their filters are working properly, they don't have any real concern for mosquitoes. But if they have a stagnant pond where the water isn't being filtrated through, they can move mosquitoes. David, and I've seen these things at some of the home improvement stores and such, uh, these little uh, uh, things that you can actually put in the water. Some of them are in the shape of donuts, mosquito, donuts. mosquito dumps. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do those work? Yeah, well they well they work against the larva. Uh, they don't they don't have any impact against the living mosquitoes that are in the air. The and, right. But but against the larva, yeah, they can't they do kill the larva. All right. So as a mosquito uh, sets its eggs in water, mm -hmm. then uh, then mosquito dumps can help eliminate they will the help larva. eliminate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, you said we had a death here in Wayne County. Uh, uh, how common is that? Uh, should we be concerned? No, well, you know, you no, not concerned as much as just precautionary. You know, take, use common sense. Uh, not only talking about the standing water issues, but people need to. If mosquitoes are most active at dusk and dawn, and any time in between, they're active, but they're most active at those two times of the dusk day. Dusk 
and at dawn. That's correct. What about clothing? Is there any particular? If you're outside for whatever reason, you need to have some common sense usage of long pants and long sleeves if you're going to be exposed and also use EPA approved mosquito repellents. Use mosquito repellents? Even with the clothing because that, that, that double barrier will help protect you against mosquito bites. There's some homegrown remedies that people uh, have been using such as I'm, I'm told that vinegar works well against uh, against uh, mosquitoes. Is that true? I, I, you're outside of my scope well, on that way. <laughs> well, mine too, but I thought I, I'd I, ask I'm you. I'm not 100% sure if vinegar, mm -hmm. vinegar does. I, I've heard a lot of different home remedies that people say work, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I know that the, that, uh, the um, one of the sheets I have here actually has some of the list of approved, approved chemicals, and it's anything mm -hmm. that contains DEET, the carrot, the keratin, uh, and anything the oil of lemon eucalyptus Ooh. so so, so it, those are some things that we know that are approved uh, mosquito repellents and recommend that people apply them to their exposed skin along with the clothing if they want to be working outside or even active outside during those times mentioned okay dusk and dawn those wear, are the most active times wear long sleeve yeah but it could happen at other times in between that period okay mm -hmm. but long sleeves and long pants mm -hmm and protect yourself with mosquito repellent. Mm -hmm. right. and, and also look at your home and make sure your window screens and your entry barriers are intact and well maintained because they can let mosquitoes get into your home which just increases the chance of you being bitten by mosquitoes. Now everybody's been hit with a mosquito. Everybody has. Mm -hmm. So what happens, what should we do if we get hit with a mosquito bite? Well, you know, no, there's nothing really that ne needs to be done necessarily. Um, it's less than 1% of the people have severe symptoms related to West Nile. Less than 1% of the people? It's like 1 in 150 pe okay. people. Okay. Now, but the highest at risk is really anyone over uh, 50 and over. Mm -hmm. They have the highest risk of having severe symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot, I think it's like the statistics say around 80% of the people that actually contract West Nile don't even have this. It doesn't even have symptoms. So did they even know it? Probably not. Probably they not. They have symptoms. Yeah. Yes. All right. So if there's, uh, don't, don't panic. That's right, it's not, it's not a need for alarm as much as it is for awareness. Take, take, take precautionary mm -hmm. measures to just protect yourself from being bitten. Okay, and of course, when it itches, scratch it. Well, maybe not scratch it too much. Not too much, use a little alcohol on it perhaps? Yes. Okay, very good. We've been talking with David Madden of the Wayne County Health Department, director there, and David, we appreciate it. Hope you come back soon. Thank you.